And then the second one in this plenary session is Mr. Fei Yangbo. He's, a, he's from the Economic and Research Planning Institute of the Railway in China. And then he's going to present a general view of the development of the rail network in this country, in China, also uh, paying attention to the social impacts that this uh, rapid development, as everybody of you knows, has been produced in that big, big country and also in a very rapid developing country. Thank you very much, and you have the floor, Professor Mr. Giampo. Hola a todos. Good morning, everyone. It's my great honor to attend this essential Congress and introduce the China High-Speed Railway to you. And I'm Fei Jianbo from China Railway Economic and uh, Planning Research Institute. Uh, my presentation today is composed of four parts. In the first part, I will give an overview about high-speed railway development. As China is a very big country, and we uh, have a very big land and a lot of lines, so I cannot introduce line by line. I just pick up some typical lines for introduction. And in the second part, I will give an interview uh, uh, about the technological and economic features of uh, high-speed railway in China. This is the reasons why China chose high-speed railway as priority development. And in the, f in the third part, I will introduce high-speed railway's contribution to people's life, how high-speed railway influences ordinary people's life in China. And in the fourth part, I will introduce the medium and long-term railway network program. And in this part, you will know uh, what China high-speed railway will look, look like in 2030. Uh, from the 1980s to 2000s, there was a heated debate about whether China should build high-speed railways or not. Uh, some people say that China is uh, still a developing country and it's uh, too expensive to build high-speed railways. And also some people doubting whether there will be enough passengers if high-speed railways were built. And also there was uh, debates about whether to adopt maglev technology or high-speed high-speed high wheel technology. Uh, from the experience gained from the Shenyang to Qinghuangdao Kwansi high-speed railway line, we uh, started to uh, launch a project of being, building high-speed uh, railways across China. And the first uh, real high-speed railway line in China is uh, Beijing to Tianjin high-speed railway line. And it is in the city line of a transit type, and it's also a line of uh, passenger traffic only. And at one end of this line is Beijing South Station, and it has integrated spatial layout and elevated station design. We can see from this picture that this is a steel structure roof, and the elevated floor is a waiting room and the ground floor is uh, entrances and exit to the platform. And the first underground floor is a parking lot and the transfer zones. And the second underground floor and the third underground floor, passengers can take subway line four and the set subway line 14 there. And the maximum volume of passengers for this station is uh, 200,000 passengers per day. Uh, another high-speed railway line I want to do, introduce is uh, Beijing to Shanghai high-speed railway line. Uh, this high-speed high railway line goes across the uh, regi richest regions of China, and it connects the political center Beijing and economic center Shanghai. And also this, this line is a very profitable line. And in um, 2016, this line make a profit about $1 billion. This is a picture for this line. And an, another thing I want to mention is that from uh, September the 24th this year, the Renaissance is EMU trains to start to seek service on this line at the speed of uh, 350 kilometers per hour. And this is the highest uh, commercial operational 
uh, speed for high-speed railway line in the world. And right now at the present, the travel time from Beijing to Shanghai is just four hours and 20 minutes. Uh, one of the shining projects along this line is the uh, Nanjing Dashengguan Bridge. It is a six-track railway bridge. We can see from this picture that on the both sides are uh, Nanjing subway line, and on the left middle is the uh, Beijing to Shanghai high-speed railway line. On the right middle is the uh, Shanghai to Chengdu high-speed railway line. After the introduction of the first high-speed railway line, the fastest high-speed railway line in China, I want to introduce two more lines. The keywords for these two lines are long. The first uh, long high-speed railway line introduced is uh, Beijing to Guangzhou high-speed railway line. This uh, high-speed railway line has a long routine uh, length. The length is about 2,298 kilometers. And the travel time from Beijing to Guangzhou is just eight hours. Uh, um, by comparing to the European uh, distance, I think uh, th this, this line's the uh, same distance from Madrid to Berlin. And one of the type of project on this line is uh, Wuhan Tianxinzhou Bridge. It's a road rail bridge with four tracks and six lanes. We can see from this picture that on the top, there are six motor vehicle lanes. And on the bottom is the four tracks. And this lens is a cable stained bridge and also have a long spin. The main spin is 504 meters. This is the longest among bridges of the same type in the world. Another line I want to use is uh, Junzhou to Urumqi high speed railway line. And this is the uh, longest main line in the world for high speed at present. And uh, another um, uh, typical character for this high speed railway line is that this high speed railway line goes across airplane and sandy regions. And then I want to introduce more uh, lines that are uh, constructed under different and challenging geological and environmental conditions. The first line I want to use is uh, a Hainan Eastern High Speed Railway Line. We can see that it's on the island, Hainan Island. The Hainan Eastern Rain High Speed Railway Line is uh, constructed in hot and wet tropical zone. And, and this is uh, the, the, the uh, the high-speed railway lines in Hainan Island and the Hainan Islands in China is a place of interest, especially during winter time. Ha um, tourists come to uh, Hainan Islands for their winter vacations, so this high-speed railway line brings a lot of benefits to the tourists. There is uh, Dalian to Harbin high-speed railway line. It is a high-speed high railway line built with a speed of uh, 300 kilometers, and it's an extremely cold area where the latitude is uh, 42 degrees. There's the Xi'an to Zhengzhou high-speed railway line. Uh, this high-speed railway line was constructed in a large class 4 Lewis area, and 80% of this line goes across uh, large scale collapse or Lewis area. By the year 2016, the total mileage, uh, total kilometer age of the China high speed railway has reached 22,000 kilometers. And uh, the high speed network has almost reached every province in China and connect cities with more than 500,000 populations. The China High Speed Rail Work is uh, shipping up. And, and, and another thing I want to mention is that by the end of the year, th this line, the Xi'an to Chengdu High Speed Railway line, will open to, tra to traffic. Uh, after the introduction of the China High Speed Railway line, um, you may ask why, why China uh, High Speed Railway line is developing so fast. 
I think there have to be some deep-rooted reasons. In this part, I've introduced the technological and economic features of high-speed railway in China. Firstly, China high-speed railway has advanced and proven technologies. We have uh, established high-speed technology system covering several aspects, such as uh, track engineering, uh, high-speed EMU, train control system, and so on. Uh, I will take tra train control system for further explanation because some of you may be uh, interested in that, but I'm no expert in that because I'm a civil engineer. J just a brief introduction. Uh, I've introduced the chi Chinese train control system. The Chinese train control system can be cl classified into four categories. The CDCS0 is a very simple train control system. A used track circuit to check line occupation, and it is for low, used for low speed lines built before. Usually, the speed is below 160 kilometers per hour. And the uh, transmission channels of CDCS1 is uh, track circuit and balloons, and it is used for the C, uh, for uh, railway lines below the speed of 160 kilometers. And the CDCS2 also use uh, track circuit and ballast as the transmission channel, and it is used for newly built railways with, with a speed of 200 to 250 kilometers hour, and it is also used for speeded up and rebuilt railway with a speed of 200 kilometers per hour. The difference between CDCS1 and CDCS2 is that uh, the CDCS1 is a point type ADP type uh, system, uh, while the CDCS2 uses uh, ERTM type data packets. And uh, another thing I will mention is that CDCS1 is no longer used at present in China. And the most advanced uh, Chinese train control system is the CDCS3. Uh, the transmission channels for this system is uh, track circuit, ballast, and just some more. And, um, and it, uh, it has also has a radio block center. And it is used for high-speed railway lines built with a speed of uh, 250 kilometers per hour, 350 kilometers per hour, and above. And if we compare the CDCS with uh, European ERTMS, we can see that the CDCS3 is uh, very similar to the ERTM3. And tri China right now is uh, developing the, the CDCS4, um, which can be comparable to the ERTM3. You can see this picture that uh, the three transmission channels for CDCS3. And in the picture below that we can th see that the transmission channels are designed redundant. And if, uh, uh, if a station fails, the, singer ca the signal can still cover the whole line. Another character is that I uh, want to uh, introduce is about China high-speed railway. It says that it's very safe and reliable. We have a safety assurance system, such as uh, real-time monitoring of the infrastructure and mobile equipment, real-time monitoring of natural environment, data collection uh, for maintenance and repair. And there are, at present, there are 29,000 trains ordinarily operated under the command of a CR train control system every day. And China has to be a railway has better compatibility. The Chinese CDCS system is compatible with the European ETCS system. And also for our standards, the China railway standards integrates uh, ISO, UICA, IEC standards. Moreover, uh, China high-speed railway is environmental friendly and energy efficient. Wide duct is widely used on high-speed railways to replace subgrade. And water and soil measures adopted in high-speed railway construction. 
and, uh, uh, and we have uh, also adopted some environmental protection uh, measures such as sun barriers and damping solutions. Uh, as China high speed railway is uh, favored by more and more people in China, it has changed people's life too. In this part of your um, uh, analysis, uh, high speed railway's contribution to people's life in China. Uh, firstly, the high speed railway changing the people's traveling habits. We can see from the blue columns that on the year 2015 and, two year, and 2016, um, there are about uh, more than 1 billion passengers taking high speed railways in China. And the re red column indicates the p passengers taking high speed railways to the um, the passengers taking uh, uh, railways, that's including the high speed railway and the ordinary railways. We can see that from uh, on the year 2016, there are more people taking high, high speed railways than ordinary trains in China. And also, the high speed railway cutting time between cities in China is pushed forward urbanization, promotes regional regional development and color with new lifestyle concept in China. For example, the housing price in Beijing is very high. It offers a, 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 offer a choice for uh, people to live in Tianjin, a very nearby city, and to work in, uh, in Beijing because uh, traveling time between the two cities is just 30 minutes. And also, the high speed railway both economic and social development in China. And three main EMU manufacturers are built up around, around China. And the EMU supporting enterprises are built to around China. In the last part, I will introduce the medium and long term railway network program in China. From the uh, long term, uh, medium and long term railway network program published in 2008, uh, four north to south, four east to west high speed railway main lines will be built. And right now, at the present, this program has almost accomplished. And according to the latest medium and long term railway network published in 2016, Eight north to south, eight east to west high speed railway main lines will be built in the future. And by the year 2020, there will be uh, 30,000 kilometers high speed railways in China. And by the year 2030, the total kilometer age of uh, uh, railways in China will reach 200,000 kilometers, including. 40, uh, 45,000 kilometers. And the last thing I want to mention is that the development of China um, is a, a kind of experience from countries around the world, in, including Spain. And we right now have uh, more experience of uh, building high speed railways, and we are willing to share our experience to, uh, to the world. Thank you. That's all my presentation. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Yambo. A really impressive presentation of these very rapid and big developments in your country that all, all of us we know, but this is impressive to see all these figures all together.